I'm talking about young shakes. I want you to represent me. This is James. This is for my city. Hey, I do it for my city. I don't plan on going down. If he think I'm going down, then he gon' going to burn around. For my city. I ain't never been a jump. And if he think I'm a jump, I should get his head up for my city. Hello, this is Lacey L. Rice Jr. of Rice Fame Group, welcoming you to chat with HBCU Champions, Season 3, Episode 13, with Head Coach Kenneth Giles of the Norfolk State University Men's and Track Field uh, Team. And um, his team, once again, won the MEAC Championship this year. So congratulations once again, Coach, and welcome to the show. Hey, um, hey, look, um, I, you know, I think this is becoming a um, an annual event, but thanks for having me on, and I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, most definitely, is a is an <laughs> annual event, and, and uh, you've been here all three years that we've done this. So, uh, congratulations for that, and and, and you know, evidently, y'all are doing something right over there in Norfolk State. Well, you know, I tell you what, man, all the success is attributed to, you know, the student athletes, the coaches, the assistant coaches, you know, they're the one to put that grind in, the administrative staff to make sure that, you know, we have, we have everything we need to be successful. So I think, um, you know, we, 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 we really have everything in place here at Norfolk for us to be a successful program. Okay. And, and, and so, um, this is actually the second time that we we've uh, interviewed you or that we're interviewing you because you won a cross country championship earlier this year, but now we're here for the uh, track and field and and uh, like I said, you know you're doing a, a, a great job over there and uh, you know we know that over the last few years it's been like a you know it's almost like you guys take the men and and then uh one of your competitors over there take the women but you right there with the women as well and so you know it's just it but the the, the truth of the matter is is great for hbcu all around because you don't just have uh like like what what happened in basketball or football where you only have one program going to the national championship tournament, you have multiple programs from your conference going to the national championship, the regional championships and the national championships. Well, I'll I, I tell you one thing. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to reflect on um, the first part of what you said. Our women's program did a great job during the indoor and outdoor season you know, it was the best, it was the best season that we've ever had. Um, you know, our women's cross country team won the championship in cross country. Um, indoor, we lost the indoor championship by 16 points. And uh, we had a few mishaps, but, you know, I give, I give all the credit to David Oliver and, and those Howard Bisons. And then um, outdoors, we, we were leading up to the final two events and, um, and they end up beating us by 31 points. Um, but but we really had a great showing. Um, you know, we scored 199 points outside. And um, at, at any other conference championship, those number of points would win it. So um, you know, hopefully, hopefully when you um when you interview me, um, you know, next year, you know, we'll be talking about the men and women championships. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that that's great. It's nothing like uh, an exciting track and field uh, championship that that kind of, that goes down to the wire, uh, right. you know, because because you just don't know what's going to happen, and and, and 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 people might just because we came out of you know out of the Olympics, people might get some things confused. In the Olympics, you don't tally team points. Right. So, right. Right. But and and uh, from the lowest uh, level, which might be elementary nowadays, <laughs> <laughs> all, all the way up to the collegiate level, right? You know, you're competing on 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 the team level, 
um, where points really matter and where yeah. you want those athletes to score in as many events as they can. Yeah, you, you really do. You want them to score in, in as many events as they can because those points add up. And um, and I think that's what happened. When well, there's no thinking, that's what happened to us on the women's side. Um, you know, we ran out of events and we knew that Howard would come strong in those final two events, which was the 200 meters and the 400 hurdles. So, um, you know, um, they did a great job. We, we fell short a little bit on the ladies' side. But, um, you know, we brought in an outstanding recruiting class for this upcoming academic year. And, we, and, we, and we're looking to, um, you know, to, 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 to make up that difference that we didn't have during the indoor and outdoor season. Okay. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll take things a little differently than we normally do. Uh, okay. Let's talk okay. a bit more about that, about um, the MEAC championships. Like, um, on, the, on the high school level, um, in some collegiate conferences, they only allow you to enter maybe two individuals and one relay for, for the event. Um, what's the um, criteria or standard for the MEAC? Okay, um, for the MEAC, you know, you, you, have to, you, you have the opportunity to enter one student athlete per event. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, let me take that back. I apologize. You can enter four student athletes per event. If you have more than four, all of them must hit the qualifying standard. And you and you can enter up to eight. Okay. Yes, you can enter up to eight. You know, so um, you know you have you 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 have the opportunity to enter four, but if you have five, then that means all five of them must meet the qualifying standard that's set by the um by the MEAC. Okay. Okay. And so let's say that you are fortunate enough to have like six or eight. Um, entries in an event uh, can can all of them score, or is there a limit on how many can score? No, um, I mean you know the scoring is the top eight. It's the top eight per event, and um, if 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 you're fortunate enough to take one through eight, then and you know, and you know, but but that that's likely not to happen, um, especially at a conference championship when we have. Um, when we have um, seven other um, member institutions that's out there competing, and um, you know, I'm pretty sure someone else has a has a student athlete who can break into that scoring. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so, um, like for your uh, for your team, yes, is there an event that um, you are heavy in? Yo, yeah, we 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 we, we were um, on both the men and women's side. We were um, we were heavy in the middle distance distance events. I mean, we we were very strong in those events. Uh, and when I say strong, Larry, I mean we were strong. Wherein they can those our student athletes can compete in any mid major conference in the country, and some and some of the power and some of the power four um, conference. Um, you were time. saying that um, that your middle distance distance that they could uh, compete in any mid mid major conference in in America. Yeah, they could. They can compete. They can compete in any in any mid major conference, um, and and some and some power conferences also. Um, we 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 have a we have a real we have a we 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 have a real good um, middle distance and distance program here in Norfolk. Um, we were we were also very strong in um, in the in the 400. Um, our 400 runners, 400 hurdlers, they did a great job for us also. So we 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 had a lot of depth in various areas, mm -hmm. and um, I, and I think that's what it takes. That's what propelled us to have um, a successful um, MEAC championship. Okay, and, and I kind of noticed that to be a bit different, like I said, than the high school side where, you know, you're, you're looking primarily, I mean, you might be strong in certain areas, uh -huh. but once again, you can only enter, you know, uh, 
maybe two athletes at Regions. <laughs> <laughs> Those two, you know, have to try their best to uh, to play so that they can make it to state. And, right, uh, right. So you don't, you 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 can't really. You can load up during the season so that you can have your pick of who your top two is. But unlike the collegiate level where you can actually enter them in the postseason, you know, it, it, it does it definitely doesn't work that way. And um I, I found that interesting when I my first uh collegiate coaching experience because the program where I was, which was a, a power five program. Um, they were real strong in the field events, mm-hmm. and, and, and uh, you know, especially especially the throws. So, you know, we knew we kind of knew what we had there. You know, they were trying to ramp er- up everything else. I think the di- the distance group was was pretty strong too. So they were trying to get the um, sprints in the middle distance up with everyone else. But right, you know, right, right. We, you know, whenever you whenever you would hear about them, um, and and you see who the All Americans were, they were the throwers and the jumpers. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Now they did have they did have they had a, a All American. Uh, actually, they had a national champion who repeated in in the steeplechase as well. Right, right. And so, like I said, you know, but that. That's how it was for that team, and I, I always found that dynamic of collegiate uh, track and field to be very interesting. Because even as an assistant commissioner in the NAIA, the the, the program that um, the our strongest program had one national championship uh, mm-hmm. the prior year, and so. The year I was most involved, he was kind of loaded like you were. He, you know, he had all these sprinters, <laughs> <laughs> and when we had to uh, adjust how we did things in the conference, right, right, that was one of the adjustments. Because, <clears throat> like I said, they they dominated the sprints, so all the coaches voted. Well, maybe we should just let everyone have up to four entries instead of <laughs> having, having 10 entries and all this and the other. Right, right. Nine before that program came into the conference, before that, they were entering as many as they wanted. And, and, and so there, there was still a, a uh, program that was dominating the conference. But when this other program came in and started beating up on them, then we had to change. Right. Okay. 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 <laughs> so when the other program came in and started beating up on him, he said, "He said, no, it's time to change now." <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, that that is very interesting, and and mm-hmm. for those who have not been to a live track and field meet. I I would highly recommend that you do that. I mean, for you know, sometimes it might be long. Some of the meets do last a couple of days because of quali- qualifying rounds. But you know, um, especially in instances where it's a tight meet, there's nothing like it when you get down there to, especially when you get to that last event, and, and that might be the deciding factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely can get exciting. It definitely can get exciting uh, when it comes down to the finals. You know, the preliminary round sets the stage, sets the stage for the finals. And um, and and a lot of times you want a competitive meet because you want the cream to rise to the top once you get to the finals. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what you want. Mm-hmm. And they, who, who was that? I know they mentioned that in the Olympics, um, there was an event, and I, well, I know it happened a couple times, especially in the distance events on the on, on the women's side and uh-huh. on the men's side. That's where it was. It was the men's fifteen hundred, where uh, uh, Yard and the Goose got third. Yeah, and, uh-huh. and I think Hawker got. Hawker won it. 
Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And the guy from Great Britain, the guy from Great Britain got second. And right. the guy from Norway who won the five thousand, he ended up getting fourth. <laughs> right. And he was the favorite. He was the champion. favorite going into the meet. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He yeah. was the defending champion. He went out. He went out fast. But he ended up bringing bringing some of those other guys up with him. He just unfortunately for him, he ended up fading in the end. Right, right, right. But like you said, that that's that's one of the things that can happen. You know, the cream can rise can rise to the top because they are facing greater competition than they might have faced throughout the year. That's true. That is true. That is true. Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. so, so and that's what and, and you know what Larry, that's what we look for when we when we're preparing for our conference championships. As coaches, I know like on my staff, our coaches look for, and we look for a, the student athletes who's going to step it up at the next level, who's going to step it up at conference, who's going to step it up at, up at the um, NCAA regionals, and hopefully at the final round. That's that's you know that's exactly what we what we um what we look for. Okay. And, 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 of course, you know, when you get down to that time in the season, you want everyone to peak. Or uh, for us coaches, that's uh, when um, your athletes are performing or hitting their best marks in the season. Right, right, right. And so how do you, without giving us too many of your secrets, <laughs> How, how do you uh, prepare your athletes to peak? I know for, for me, on the high, when I was coaching on the high school level, mm -hmm. I would, you know, get them as many reps throughout the year that I can get them, and then that usually resulted to them peaking around regionals or state. Now, how, do, how does that happen on the collegiate level? Well, you know, every program, every program does it different. Um, you know, but with my program, what we do is almost like it's almost like building a house. Mm -hmm. When you build a house, you gotta have a foundation, mm -hmm. and every and all of it is through periodization. So um, you want to have that base. And I don't care what event you do, you could be a thrower, you could be a jumper, you could be a vaulter, but you gotta have a you you have to have a base that's associated with the event that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So we provide that base during our base period, and the base period is typically the fall season. And then um, as we transition out of the base period, we go into the racing part of our, and the competition part of our schedule. And, um, and then, and, 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 and from there, you know, the more races you get and the, and the, fitter, and the fitter you are, the, 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 the faster you will run, jump, throw and or you know a vault whatever hurdle or whatever whatever the case may be so that's pretty much that's pretty much how we do it right there okay now i know um some coaches um especially some sprint coaches what they will do during the during the fall uh but their sprinters is that they will have them and, and i know there are different philosophies about this Right, right, right. Um, they will have some of their sprinters to run cross country. Now they well, might just put them in a couple meets. <laughs> well, 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 that's a you know, you know, Larry, that's an old school philosophy. I, times have changed and moved past that um, because you need your sprinters in the fall. They have to be in the weight room. Mm -hmm. um, they have to be in the weight room, and they um, and 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 because that weight room. It's gonna get them ready, you know, for um, you know, for sprinting. So what what typically what we do, we go out there and recruit distance runners um, to run cross country. Yeah, we go you go out there. Um, any most major programs they have distance runners to run cross country. I think the days of, of having those sprinters, hurdlers, and jumpers go out there and run cross country. Those days are over with a little bit. Those days are over with. Okay. Okay. 
And and I know part of that was, like I said, the the philosophies that differed were um, coaches who opposed that did so because that would affect sprinters' fast twitch muscles. I don't know. I don't know if it. I don't know. Like I say again, I, I think that's that's a, <laughs> that's an old school philosophy. Also, um, mm-hmm. I don't think um, if you. And you try to go out there and give them 60 miles a week, yeah, it's gonna get them, it's gonna get them injured. But I don't believe that um, you know we've had you know we've had successful um, sprinters, short and long, and um, and we put we put a little we put a little extra emphasis on our base work during the fall, and that base work may consist of going out there running maybe you know two or Two or three miles on 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 um, on on on, um, on your day on your day that you don't do um you don't do interval work. Mm-hmm. So um so it, I guess it's just it's just a difference in philosophy. Our philosophy works for us. We've been very successful at it. So um we stick by the model of which um you know the our governing body the USATF or um. Or, or, or the United States Track and Field Cross Country Coaches Association go off go off of us. So we stick by that model typically. Okay. Yeah. And so with uh you know with your athletes having that base, as you said, by the end of the year with the reps that they get throughout the, the in, indoor and outdoor season, they should Hopefully, peak by the time you go in the conference. Yeah, because 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 the more races you get, once once you um the more races you get, um the better you gonna be. Mm-hmm. I can I can tell you that right now, man. The, the more the more races you, you you get, the better off you gonna be, and the more and, and the fitter you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now um, you also mentioned weightlifting. I know it. I, I remember when the push started here in Kentucky for at least on, on the high school side. Uh, my program program I was with, they always lifted, and so they were kind of like the model. Uh, but but several others, uh, for instance, I had one athlete um, who was uh, a middle schooler who ran for me from sixth grade to eighth, Uh um, she moved for her freshman year. And she was actually, as as a seventh and eighth grader, she was actually on the high school team um, as a sprinter. And she she went to state as as an eighth grader in the 400. Okay. And and so uh, when she transferred (laughs) to another school, they, they didn't lift weights. And so, and so she was kind of, you know, fussing with, with them and, you know, trying to get them to see about, you know, the benefits of lifting. And then I remember the coaches coming to our coaches uh, clinic uh, that we have in the state. And they were, they were getting those notes. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we need to do. And so uh, I, I, I know that there's a philosophy also that during the off season you're you're building uh, more for strength or or so you you're building to to become stronger. But then during mm-hmm. the season you're lifting more for maintenance. Uh, is that is that a, a popular for on the college side um, and make for your program? Is that primarily um, your philosophy as well? Well, well, we lift, we lift because you want to get those, especially for your for your for your power events. Um, you know, a thrower, a thrower has to lift because in, in most cases, you know, once you got the technique part of it down, the strongest person will win. Okay, in, in those sprinting races, in those technical events, the lifting is essential because, you know, all your power is in your hips area. So mm-hmm. when you explode out those blocks, you want to make sure that that, 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 that those, those hamstrings are strong, those quads, um, you know, because 
those are the areas that's going to um, that's going to really go down if you're not strong. And you got to, you know, you you you, you you got to have that upper body strength as a quarter miler because once you get past 300 meters, you like to go to your arms, and so you know, it, I mean, it, it, every every everything in track and field that we do is associated with the weight room. Now mm-hmm. we do know what we do on the track supersedes what you do in the weight room, but they go hand in hand. They have to go hand in hand. Right. They have to. Yeah, they have to. And and that's why I was glad too that the uh, you know the Olympics came uh, this year and 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 showcase a lot of track and field which it, it normally does you yeah, know it, it normally does. anyway yeah, it does. but one of the things that many people saw I mean even though even though she didn't win the hundred you know uh, Shikari doesn't necessarily have the best start out of the blocks. But right. she, you, she usually she, she's usually blowing past people, you know, fifty meter, fifty meters down the track, and I, I always notice she maintains her form, which a lot of sprinters don't do. They don't have that that high knee lift that she has. Well, she, what, well, what, what it is, Larry? Like, she has better top end speed. Mm-hmm. Her top end speed is better than everybody else's. Right. So, um, so once she come out the blocks and comes into her drive phase, mm-hmm. she's gonna transition into her, and, and, and she's gonna go into her transition phase, and mm-hmm. then from her, that's when she's gathering up her top end speed. Her, mm-hmm. she's gonna, she can hold that top end speed probably from about, from about forty meters or so to about, probably to about eighty meters. And then, mm-hmm. and then that's where the weight room come in at, and she's finishing up those last twenty meters or so in that hundred. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I said, I I just noticed her her stride length and everything else with that. You know, her her technique versus everybody else's technique. When I'm looking at them, it's like, okay, you know, this, this girl. <laughs> <laughs> her, 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 her coach earned his money. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They just, but, but you know, when you, when, 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 when you coaching a generational, that's a generational top top type type mm-hmm. You don't get those type of kids every year. Right. You know, um, you don't, you don't get them every year. So, right. um, you know, when you get someone like that, you know, you know, at, um. You know, you just, you just got to, you know, whatever plan you have for them, you just got to follow that plan and um and live with the results. Right. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, that, and that's why I also, I'm, I'm a big advocate, <clears throat> excuse me, of coaching education. Uh, right. Because you, you had mentioned the Coaches Association earlier. That's primarily where I got a lot of my education. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a boost nationator of the cycle. So, uh, <laughs> you know, he taught me, he taught me a lot. And, uh, I mean, I have to admit when we got into biomechanics though, I, I left that class. My, my brain was scrambled. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I was talking to, I was talking to, I, I was coaching on the collegiate level at that time, and I was talking, okay. I was talking to some more experienced collegiate coaches, and they came out with their brain scrambled as well. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, I, 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 I tell you one thing, um, dealing with, um, you know, dealing, dealing, dealing with those biomechanics and everything, um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it's, you know, it, it'll have you scrambling because. It, it involves it involves research. It involves science, and science is research. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. So you know, we, you know, we're in the age now that you know you have to research and you have to you know your particular event. You know, because these two athletes know they know when you when 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 when, when if if if, it, if it's a particular area and you're not real familiar with that area, I'm gonna be nice about it. I'm gonna right. say it like that. <laughs> They know they know when you're not that knowledgeable in that area. So um, especially when you when you recruit the um, the elite athletes out of high school, or you get 
um, ones that's already there out of the transfer portal and everything. So yeah, mm -hmm. so you have to um, you have to research your event. Okay. Okay. Now, one of the things I did notice this year about the Olympics that I did not, well, it was different than the Olympics three years ago in, in Brazil. No, it, um, three years ago was in Tokyo. I'm sorry, in Tokyo. Yeah, okay. It, it, it was in Brazil the year before. Right, right. Yeah, before yeah. That. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, right. But in Tokyo, I remember them uh, talking, you know, especially Otto Bolden kept talking about all these international athletes who actually went to American institutions who, comp who competed in American programs. But I didn't notice that many this year. And I don't know if it was just one of those things somebody might have told them, hey, you know, you know, put that out or I don't know what happened. Because well, I know there were some there that, that did compete in, you know, at American institutions. Well, I think, I think what it is, Larry, I think it's a little difficult when you have that long collegiate season that mm -hmm. goes from, you know, you got, you have the indoor season, then you, have, then you have the outdoor season, and the NCAA championships is typically the second week of June. Mm -hmm. So usually what happens is hard to maintain that you know that 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 level of fitness and and just maintain that racing edge for for that that long a time, man. And you know, you, you, I mean, you gonna be at some point something will have to break down, and the body the body is gonna break down at some point, right. and they, and they gonna get tired, man. They gonna get tired, you know. So I think that's what happened with a lot of collegians this year. Um, but but we still, I mean, you know, we had we had a great showing at at the Olympics and in Paris, and um, it was, in my opinion, it was the best that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, they they did a wonderful job. They did the student athletes did a wonderful. I mean, the, the athletes did a wonderful job. The athletes did a wonderful job, and the coaches mm -hmm. did an even better job. Because as coaches, look, hey, look, as coaches, I mean, we held as the greatest. When things go well, but when things don't go well, where to go? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so you know, it's it's it can be, um, you know, like you said, we, like I said earlier, we just got to live with the results. That's and that's that's typically what we do. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And you have um, you 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 have quite a few international athletes in your program, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And yeah. is there a specific uh, region that you recruit from internationally or are you just global? Well, you know, um, wherever, to tell you the truth, um, Larry, wherever our recruiting contacts land us, that's where we go. Um, you know, we've been, we've been successful um, getting, um, getting the, um, student athletes from Kenya. Um, we've, uh, on the lady side, we just um, branched out into getting some from Jamaica. Um, I have a um, I have a coach on my staff that I hired three years ago. He's from Jamaica. He's done a great job in um, in transforming um, our women's program. So you know we're um, we're, we're, we're we're tapping into that um, that Jamaican um, recruiting area now on on the ladies' side. Um, on the men's side, um, outside of our distance runners, um, you know, we pretty much doing it with Americans. So, um, but you know, we will go global if necessary. Okay. Yes. And, and uh, as far as your conference, is, is it uh, is it heavy with uh, international athletes? Well, to tell you the truth. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that nationality that other institutions, man. I don't, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't even really follow it because I really don't even care, you know. Um, so I, I don't know where the other coaches get their get their get their athletes from. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you can you can look at a name and you may think that 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 kid is from America. That kid may not be from America or something like that. So so really, I, I really don't know. 
Yeah, and, vi- and vice versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, 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 right. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And so, but, you know, I, 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 I still think that's great. It's great for not only the program, but also great for the institution um, to have that diversity within the, the, the university. Because I know, you know, uh, when I went when I went to college, I was fortunate enough to have gone in the military first, and I was stationed overseas, so I was already exposed to people from other places versus my peers where I went to school. Uh, now later on, they had a lot more international students to attend the institution, but you know, I always love the benefit of me being ex- exposed to other cultures and other people so that, you know, when I approach different people, I would have a sense of uh, respect for others and, and not trying to just put my philosophies of what I do upon them. Well, you know, when I, when I was, when, when I was, when I was at university of North Florida, we had um, we had a a, 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 a a large well not a large but we had a couple of um, athletes from Ireland on our team and um, they were they were pretty good distance runners so um, our coach um, you know our coach tapped into that system but but I think recruiting international students um, you know we're, we're what we're doing we're falling into the same um, into the same concept as the institution. Because the institution recruits, every institution recruits abroad. So why can't athletics do the same thing? Mm-hmm. So that's what we're doing. I mean, you know, we have, you know, we have international students at Norfolk State. I'm pretty sure every other institution in the country has a um, has a contingent of in, international students um, at, at their institution. Mm-hmm. So um, so why can't we do it in athletics? Right. Yeah. Right. And, 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 you know, another big difference between coaching on the collegiate level versus coaching on the club or secondary level is that on the collegiate level, that's your livelihood. That, right, that, right, you know, right. your, your success is your livelihood, whereas on the high school level, you know, you, you can be in a situation where you hadn't sent one person to state in 20 years. <laughs> and still have a job, and uh, and I've had to, I've had actually had to explain that to some coaches. Right. I wonder why, you know, especially institutions from Power Five um, conferences, uh-huh. why they're not recruiting their athletes or athletes in their area. It was like, you know, hey, that the time that those kids are running is not going to get it in that conference, and these well, coaches, yeah. Well, that's why, you know, that's why um, a lot of programs, that's why we've established, um, because as coaches, we're in a coaching fraternity. We all talk to each other. When we go to our coaches convention at the end of the year, we sit around and we talk to each other. We share concepts and everything. And and, and, and we, we're we in, Larry, we're in, we're in a results-based industry. As coaches, we celebrate team championships. We don't look at who you coach. We look at how many championships you won. And because because if you if you hang around long enough, you're gonna coach somebody. But we look at how many we look at how many championships you don't want. So we like at Norfolk State, we celebrate team accomplishments, not individual accomplishments. Mm-hmm. Because that's what it's all about. It's all about team accomplishments. So when you leave out of this institution, you, you you can say that I had a positive ex- experience, and we and we won a lot of championships. Mm-hmm. That and that and that and, and to me to me that that's what it's about. Um, you know, so so that's why it's important for these student athletes to pick the right institution to go to, right. because if you can if you pick the wrong institution to go to, it can be detrimental to your development, not only as an athlete but as a young man or a young lady. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And yep. so um switching back to our normal format, um who were some of your top athletes this year? Well I take I I, 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 I I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna start I'm gonna start with 
you always start with the MVPs, man. So, you know, at, we, we pretty much swept all the individual accolades at the championships um, during the outdoor season. Um, Leslie Young, she was the field athlete of the year on the ladies' side. Then we had um, Yvonne Sandui and Marceline Camayo. They were co-MVPs on, on the track um, on the ladies' side. On the men's side, Victor Jumo was MVP both indoors and outdoors. So um, he did yeoman's work for us. He did yeoman's work for us um, both indoor and outdoors. He 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 had a great um, season for us. A really great season. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, um, what about yourself? Um, uh, what uh, uh, accolades did you receive? <laughs> Well, you know, I was I was I was coach of the year on um, um, indoors and outdoors. Um, so, you know, I was fortunate enough to get that. But but you know, Larry, I'm gonna tell you, I couldn't I couldn't have done it without my staff, man. I have a great I have a great coaching staff. Um, I got two coaches um, that's that that's on my team. They've been head coaches before, and they and they sit in the same seat that I'm sitting in now. So, you know, it's almost like it's almost like, you know, the president in the over office, man. When you know, when you got that advisor who, who you know, who who's who's advised other other people before or they don't been you know, they don't been through what you're what you're trying to go through. So, you know, I lean on them to you know, to take this program to the next level and everything. Um and they they know exactly what I'm going through because they set They've sat in that chair before. They've sat in that seat before at other institutions. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, <clears throat> excuse me. With those experienced coaches, um, how were you able to convince them to come come work for you? Oh man, I, I every hey, hey, I tell them, man, you're gonna win a lot of championships and you're gonna have some fun, man. <laughs> well, but but you know. You know, I, I, I tell you, you I, I tell you this, man. Success breeds success, and I, I will say that success yeah. breeds success. We've been fortunate enough um, to have a lot of success at Norfolk State. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the administration has been very supportive um, of what we do. They've been very supportive of the program. You know, we put a lot of resources into our track and field program. You know, we put. I'm gonna tell you this. We put the same resources into our track and field program as some of the power schools, man. I mean, we put a lot of resources. And so, you know, they, you know, it's almost like in the NFL, as they say, it's Super Bowl or bus. Mm-hmm. It's conference championship or bus for us. You know, we have to win. We have to win the conference championship. And we know what the expectations are. The coaches know what the expectations are. Mm-hmm. You know, so, um, you know, it's 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 um, fortunate. You can say fortunate, or you can say unfortunately. But fortunately, I say is a business, and that's how we operate. Wow. And 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 how we operate things here at Norfolk is 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 we've had a lot of success on how we're doing it. So our way is successful for us. Okay. And you've been there a long time. Um, <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> And I can't remember we spoke about this before, but uh, were you there when Her- when Dr. Harrison Wilson was president? No, I was not. No, I was not. No, I, no, I was not there then. I, I wasn't. Haven't been there. I haven't been there that long. <laughs> <laughs> and for no. those for those who no. don't know, uh, Her- Dr. Harrison Wilson was a past president. The, the late Dr. Harrison Wilson was the past president of Norfolk State who is the grandfather of Denver, I guess he's still with Denver Broncos quarterback. He's with, um, he's with the Pittsburgh Steelers now. Oh, okay. That's right. He got trade. Okay. Uh, so the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback, Russell Wilson, uh, Super Bowl winning quarterback, was Harrison Wilson's uh, grandson. And, uh, but I, I, I have spoken to Hey, Larry, him. can you hold on? This is my AD right quick. Excuse me. Okay. Okay. Hey, yeah. Well, to continue on my end, 
um, Dr. Wilson did bring uh, a certain culture to Norfolk State with him that was cultivated at Jackson State University as a coaching center and also at Tennessee State University where he was on the staff for Coach John Merritt, his cousin, um, during the Tennessee State uh, glory days under Coach Merritt. So Coach Giles spoke about the expectations there. Uh, so just know that his uh, that some of that expectation did come from Dr. Wilson, um, who helped build Norfolk into what we see today. It was much smaller before he got there, um, but he 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 brought a. Uh, a standard of excellence there. Um, and unfortunately, everyone has not gotten to know Dr. Wilson or to speak to him. But if you did, the accomplishments from that family are phenomenal. Um, his son played in the Ivy League where he starred, I believe he was an All-American, um, had a chance to go play in the NFL but decided to go ahead and get his law degree first. Um, and, and that son is the father or was the father um, of Russell Wilson as well. So that is some of what the excellence is there at Norfolk State. A lot of that um, Dr. Wilson definitely carried with him into that, into that uh, institution and the institution has grown since then. So I just uh, was telling uh, the audience a, a bit about the um, Dr. Wilson effect at Norfolk State. I, 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 and, and I'll say this, I apologize. I know we, we live, but that was my athletic director and I had to take that call. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's no, that's no problem. When the boss calls, you got to answer. Yeah, I had to, I had to take, I had to take that call. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had to take that call. But um, and so I'm um, going now to talking about the. We did talk about the conference a little bit earlier, um, but to talk about some more, um. In this age of conferences, um, trying to become these mega conferences uh, with double digit members, um, the MEAC has um, stayed rel relatively, I guess, small by comparison to some of the mega conferences. Yes. Um, but uh, can you tell us a, 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 about the competition there in the MEAC? Well, I think. Um... From a track and field standpoint, it's, it's a very is one of the top mid major conferences in the country. Um, it's very competitive. Um, you know, we can um, our schools can compete in any in any mid major conference in the country, and um, and and some of our top schools can compete um, in some of the power in some in some of the power conferences. Um, you know, you take teams like Howard on the ladies' side. And us on the men's side, um, you know, we can compete and we can compete in some of the top in, in the top half of some of the power conferences. Um, you know, we, um, you know, we, we, um, we, we got some good student athletes, both uh, men and women, in this conference that that um, compete. So it's not like, you know, the MEAC is, you know, I can't go here, so I'll go down to the MEAC. It's not like that. No, it's not like that. You know, we we want the same athlete that that um that's considering going to the Atlantic Coast Conference schools, some of the SEC schools. Um, now you know we know we don't have some of the resources financially that they don't have. I mean that they have. We don't have that. But but you know we um you know from a from a track and field standpoint, you know we can. We can do some of the same things they do. We can do some of the same things they do. Um, it's, it's, it's a little different. It's a little different than football and basketball. Okay. Yes. 
And, and, well, and, and I mean, there's tests of it as well on uh, what you, the statement that you made about going to uh, other men major conferences and, and, and doing well because you have current, you have current MEAC uh, members who have won in other conferences like the NEC. Um, and, and some of those other conferences, they 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 want they they, they won a, a championship. Let's say in uh in, in track and field in the MEAC, then compete at the NEC conference and win right there too. Yeah, so, and, yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. That is true. I mean, I mean, you know, you, you got um, you know, you got you got some of our schools. They um, you know, they they compete well in the, in, in our conference and they go to you know, other conferences, other championships, and they do well there also. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so that, yeah, that's a, te- that's a testament to, to your conference and, and to programs in the conference. So, uh, you know, like you said, it's, it's not like a, it's not, it's not a cakewalk. You you think you can uh, just walk up into the MEAC and take over. No, 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 <laughs> no, it's not like, it's not. And, and all you got to, and all you do, and all you have to do um, anyone that's interested, just go back and look at our conference results, um, indoors and outdoors, and you'll see. Yeah, mm-hmm. you just go back and look at our conference results, mm-hmm. and you'll see. <laughs> mm-hmm. that, and that's what, and that's what I encourage, and that's what I encourage any student athlete to do that's interested in coming to Norfolk State. You know, I tell them um, that we didn't recruit, and they're looking at coming in as a walk-on. I tell them, go and look at our recruiting standards and then just go look at the results of our conference championship and see how you fit into that. If you you can't fit into that, you're going to have a difficult transition. Right, right. And and, and I don't think a lot of people, like like I mentioned earlier about um, secondary coaches, a lot of them do not look at that before they try to steer their athletes towards a specific program, it was like, you know, did you did, did you even call that institution or call that program to find out what their standards are? And, I'll tell you, and, and you're right, Larry, because you know, a lot of times, you know, we, you know, we, we're a Division One school. It's not like football, where football had FBS and FCS. And something like that, you know, we all division one. So we want the same athlete that Clemson, that Florida State get. We want the same athlete that Auburn gets and everything. So if you wouldn't send that athlete to Mississippi State, don't send that athlete here. <laughs> because we recruit, but we recruit, I mean we compete at the same national championship they compete at. Right. We compete at the same national championship they compete at. There's not a different national championship. It's the same one. So we want that same athlete. Mm-hmm. And, and, that, and, that, and, 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 and that's our approach. Right. Well, yeah. And to get to that national championship, you got to get out of region first. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. You're right. <laughs> You're right. You got to get out of the regionals first. Yes, that's correct. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, you know, I said I, I I just wish uh, more coaches w- were exposed to some of the knowledge that uh, that some others from successful programs um, have been exposed to, so that they would know some of these things, and you know, and can gauge. You know, if your if your student athlete is interested in running at the next level, you know. There are other, you know, they can't if they can't fit at a Norfolk. There are other options. Right there, there you go. And you said you said you said a mouthful right there because you know I, I can I can only speak for my institution, but and the program that I'm um, that I'm in charge of running. But Norfolk State is not for everyone, and and I tell I tell the recruits this all the time. If I have to convince you to come here. It's not the place for you. You got to want to be here. You got to want to be here. You know, I'm not a used car salesman, so I'm not going to try to convince you to come here. You have to want to be here. The interest has to be there. Mm-hmm. The interest has to be there. So, um, you know, 
you know, we go, you will get a quality education here. You, um, you're going to get, you're going to get knowledge in your particular area, um, on the track or in the field from, from experience, division one coaches and everything. So, you know, we're, we're a Nike sponsored school. We got a, we have a strength and conditioning coach. We have a masseuse. We have a chiropractor. We have everything you need, but the bottom line, you got to want to be here. Right. That's the bottom line. Right. You got to want to be here. Yep. And one of the things that I, I preach to a lot of athletes, uh, perspective af- athletes. Yes. Is that if you're fast, when you, when you go to, if you go to college, no matter where you run, if you're fast, somebody will find you. Oh yeah. That's fine. And so and Carmelita Jetter, um, I, 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 I've met her once, um, at a clinic or at, at, at a camp. And, uh, that's what she told the, the athletes at that camp. These all, these were all primarily like, I think middle school and high school athletes. Well, we have, we have some younger kids there, I think as well, but most of them were middle school and high school athletes is what she told them. She didn't run D1. She ran right. D2. <laughs> and, and she ended up being a world champion. Well, yeah, like you said, I mean, speed is something that you can't teach. I mean, you know, it's either you have it or you don't, and and that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just how it is. Yeah. And you have you have three divisions in the NCAA. You also have the NAIA. You have the NCCAA and the US the USCAA. So. There are plenty of opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got, you got, you, 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 you do have a lot of options. I mean, you know, you can, you can drop down and, um, and then, and then, and then you can, um, and then you can come back up. You know, if you, you know, if you, if you improve at, at a lower level, then you can, you know, you can get that transfer portal and you can come, come back up to, to the, to the highest level. Right. But it's very competitive at this level. Right. Right. Yes. And, and, and speaking of the, the transfer portal, and you mentioned very competitive. Uh, uh, I, I talked to another coach about the transfer portal in another sport. Mm-hmm. And the, the coach was telling me about the thousands of athletes that were in the portal. And track, and track and field, what, what's your estimate? Oh, I don't, I don't know how many, um, I don't, I mean, you know, we're in the age now that you have to use the portal, uh, but we use it only for what we need. Um, if we have a particular area need, um, we pretty much already know the student athletes that we want. So we don't go in there just to search for student athletes. We don't, we don't go in there and do that. Um, we know which ones we want which one we want and that's it um like this year i don't think um we went in the portal and got one kid um we we went in the portal and got a um and got a sneaker chaser um well actually we, we got two we went in the portal and got two kids but the the the, the previous one that we that we got he had already we wanted to come here the the, the year before but we, we just didn't, um, we didn't have equivalency at the time. We didn't have a roster spot. So he came this year. And then we used, um, we used the Porter to get, um, to get someone from, um, from a power five school, mm-hmm. um, out, out on the West coast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, coach. We 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 coming down to our last few segments. Uh, okay, okay, you know, okay. Um, you know, uh, definitely want you to talk more about Norfolk. Um, you know, what what kind of institution is it as far as academics? Well, well, I think you know we have a, 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 a variety of majors. Um, you know, you, we 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 have a STEM program here, um, cybersecurity. We have a great nursing program. Our education program is one of the top programs on campus. We have an accredited business program. 
our business program, that accreditation matters when you're trying to get your MBA and trying to go into, um, to, you know, to, to, to grad school. So that does matter. Um, we offer master's degree programs. Um, we had a young lady that was in our program last year. She was getting her master's degree and, um, and you know, and she's finishing up um, this, she's, she's gonna finish up this year and um and it's and it's working out well for her. so um you know we, we 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 also got two young ladies also this year that's getting their master's degree so um uh, and they have one year eligibility left and they they'll be competing for us also so um we, we got we 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 got a variety of um, a variety of majors here in Norfolk state you know biology chemistry you know and everything so um yeah, it's um we 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 on and on the athletic side we do have the academic resources to assist these these student athletes who may struggle a little bit um and may need a little tutoring help or may need a, a little advisory help because we have an academic advisor for track and field also. Okay, all oh, just yeah. just specifically for track. Yeah, that's the thing. Yes, yes, we do. Oh yeah. wow! That, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, that's different. <laughs> well, 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 you know, like our job is to make sure that these student athletes graduate within four to five years, and some of these some of these majors are five year majors, so mm -hmm. four and a half five year majors. So that's why I say that. But it's our job to make sure that they graduate, and that's why we put the resources into our academic department. So these, mm -hmm. so these student athletes can um, continue to meet progress towards their degree. Okay. And, and um, along with that, because you had mentioned, too, that, you know, you have a chiropractor, a masseuse, um, strength coach. Um, as far as the uh, mental health aspect, um, what do you have set up there for student athletes who might need mental health uh, services? Well, we have um, we have a mental health counselor, um, a certified mental health counselor in our program. She um, she served two she served dual responsibilities. She's an assistant track coach and also mental health personnel for our track and field program. And then we have one for the department also. And she's um, she she's she's certified. She has all all the degrees and all that stuff for a mental health specialist. Yes. So we have one, we have one for the department, and then we have one within our track and field program. Because there's going to be times that, especially when they're far away from home, they may get homesick. There's no may, they're going to get homesick, and they're going to need someone to talk to. Right. Yeah, they're going to need someone to talk to, and um, and we we provide that resources for the for the student athletes. Okay. So what's what's the approximate size of your of your total program, track and field and cross country? Well, um, what for the men we, we probably have about about twenty eight to thirty student athletes and about twenty twenty seven about I'm the same. So I'll say between men and women we probably have close to sixty student athletes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, outside of football, we're the second largest program on campus. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. and which which is which is kind of typical, um, you know, for for a lot of programs. Um, track it, it, it football is generally <clears throat> going to be your largest program for institutions or programs that have football, and in track and field will typically have a lot of numbers <laughs> that right. you're not going to get in, in the other sports. <laughs> well, well, you figure we have to have the numbers because we have, 20, you have 17 events indoors and you got 21 events outdoors. So you have to have the numbers. And then um, the NCAA has capped your roster sizes so mm -hmm. you can only have 45 student athletes on your roster for track and 17 for cross country. Oh wow! Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, that 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 that's a new one on me. Um, <laughs> yeah, they just did that this summer. Okay. Yes. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess they didn't. I guess they didn't want the rich getting richer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. They, I don't think they can avoid that. <laughs> right. 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 I, I mean, because I know I know programs that had over a hundred uh, athletes in in their programs and, and, and everything, and so you know, uh, it, and it and it does make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I think. I mean, with well, no thinking, they they had to cap the roster sizes because of the NIL, and they're starting to go into paying the student athletes now. So you know, they have to limit the roster size. Okay. It's just becoming it's becoming a cost effective thing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was cost was cost effective. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh and so as we as we do prepare to to wrap up, you know, this is usually the time that number one, the first one I'm gonna ask you about are the people who influence you. Well, well, I would say, um, I would say, um, you know, number one, um, of course, my former athletic director, um, Marty Miller, um, and then, you know, um, he had a lot of influence on me. Um, then, you know, you, you look at, you always look at the ones who, who have confidence in you to run the program over the years, you know, such as my current athletic director, Dr. Melody Webb, um, you, you know, um, you know, you, you look at um, the mentors over the year, the former track coach here, Floyd Conley, um, you know, and then, you know, my, one of my assistant coaches now who got me into track, who got me, into coaching was um, Harry Freeman, and um, you know he's uh, um, he was on George Williams' staff at, at St. Aug for years, and um, he's a Hall of Famer there at St. Aug. So you know, um, you know we all have um, you know we all have had different ones throughout the course of our time, but but um, but I would say as of right now, those are the ones that that stuck out to me. Um, I also have one though. Um, Chris Fox, who used to coach at um, University of Auburn in Syracuse, um, you know, he's um, he, he's he's a, he, he he he's still at Syracuse right now, and um, um, you know, back in the early part of my career, I used to lean on him for a lot of um, you know a lot of knowledge and know-how and direction. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And so our final question, as always, or our final uh, part, as always, is you giving out shout outs to anyone you want to shout out. Hey, I just give a shout out to my wife. You know, she, um, you know, she, you know, she, she's a big supporter. And, um, hey, she do a good job at putting up, you know, with the coach's lifestyle and everything. And, um, you know, she's done a great job. And, uh, hey, you know, she's looking forward to a big year from us also. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about it. Okay. All right. And that, and that is very important. My, my mentor, uh, that's, that's, that's actually one of the things he said to me uh, when, when I was coaching on the collegiate level. <laughs> it's like, you know, it was very hard when you married. Uh, cause it, it can put a strain on, on your marriage, especially right, right. And everything else that you got to do. So, right. uh, you know, he, he, he planted that seed within me, <laughs> <laughs> with me being a single man and everything. So, right, right. No, I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. <laughs> All right. Well, coach, we definitely want to thank you for. Uh, coming in and chatting with us again and once again you know this was not our typical chat that we normally do it was a good hey, hey, man. but I, i'm gonna be honest with you it was it was a good one i think it was better okay i, I, I do believe it was better because because we didn't we didn't really talk about the program the championships you had a, a, a variety of topics 
that you touched on that could have um, cultivated and kept the, um, the viewers' interest in, in, in it. So I think it was good. I think it was good. And, and, and I mean, I, I have an experience. I have a, an experienced, successful coach. I might as well go ahead and start you know, putting your brain and getting your viewpoints on these different topics that that right. are very important in the sport. Right, right. So I think I think I think I think this one was better. Hey, look, and I'm looking forward to the to the future one, man. <laughs> so, hey, so you know what that means? That means we got to win the championship. <laughs> right, right. Right. And I just had to tell somebody that the other day, too. It's like, you know, I, I don't, we don't interview just everybody. So, you know, right, um, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, no slight to anyone, but we have a criteria as well. So, right, yeah. But, but we definitely thank you for coming on and taking out the time to spend with us. And, and uh, please tell your athletic director that we apologize for taking you away from whatever uh whatever she needed and everything but uh you well, know we we definitely enjoy uh having you on here as always well i tell you what man i just i i, I apologize i had to take that call you know anytime she called i gotta pick up man you know, <laughs> i apologize for that <laughs> well like i like i said earlier that, that that's your livelihood you know right. yeah, you know yeah. you you're not a, you're not a high school coach where you can just kind of blow off the AD until everything's finished and know you still have a job. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so no, I, yeah, I, I appreciate your patience, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good, and and it actually gave us a chance to talk about one of the legends of Norfolk State and Dr. Harrison and, and his effect upon the institution, um, which as, as like he told me, when you um, visit Norfolk State University, what you see is what I brought. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So, uh, so we, like I said, we definitely thank you, Coach, and we thank you, the viewers, for tuning in and watching this chat with our HBCU champion, Coach Giles. And we do ask that you tune in for our repost of this particular interview. Um, it will be on audio and video podcast. And we actually ask that you subscribe to our platforms so that you can know whenever we do post our new interviews and get this knowledge. Get this knowledge and, and, and be able to know who some of the most successful coaches are in the HBCU sphere, as well as the collegiate sphere overall, because it's not just about the ones that you always hear about on television, like your Power 5 programs, but on the smaller college levels where our institutions reign, a lot of them have had a lot of success over the decades and they're not being recognized. So that's why we're here. And uh, and Coach Giles is one of those guys that, you know, hopefully one of these days, you know, his name will be up there with Nick Saban and Joe Paterno <laughs> and some of all these other guys that, that, that came down the pipe, you know, Bear Bryant and some of all these other guys. <laughs> that's our aim. And, and we ask that you, that you uh, either Google Rice Fang or that you come to our website, www.ricefame.org for more content on HBCUs and our chat with HBCU champions. Thank you and have a blessed day. Thank you. All right. Yeah. I'm talking about yeah. 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 Jumping. If he thinking I'm a chump, watch him get his head okay. up for okay. my city. Cause I feel like I love her so much. Like
like I owe her so much, but supply and her touch. I will always respect her, I will never neglect her. Bet you hear her name in like every one of my records. No, I'm not stunting, ain't no future in your fretting, right? Gotta get this money, watch me get it, get it all night. Planet flying top flight, higher than space stations. That's why I gotta grind, cause I need it, and I hate waiting.